Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot also to the organizers giving me the opportunity to talk about our platform, Astro Colibri. And similar to what uh, Maria said earlier on, it, it all starts with the people. So we are, we are a small but, but very motivated group of, of, of people running this platform and, and adding new features as, as we go along. Um, so everybody shows the, the slow charts. Here's, here's our version. Um, I won't go through the details. I mean, we all know how, how we detect transients. Um, one of the, the things here is that we have been talking about uh, throughout the week um, about the, these brokers, uh, automatic alert streams, uh, filtering classifications, going directly to the telescopes, triggering follow-up observations fully automatically. That's perfectly fine and that's uh, very valid and necessary for, for very rapid response and, and, and uh, many use cases and, uh, and science cases. Um, but we are still uh, very optimistic that the human in the loop is still necessary and, and people are curious and want to go know what's going on uh, in the sky at any given time. And most of the, of the very, very high profile follow-ups will be triggered, at least that's what we believe, uh, manually by people looking at, at the various events, at the incoming data, and then taking a decision. Now, historically, all these, all these various streams of, of information come through different uh, platforms, different brokers, the optical domain through the TNS, the high energy domain to, through GCN, LSST will, will come through these brokers, and it's was, was getting more and more complicated to combine all that data and get, an, get a global picture of, of what's going on. And it's also not helped that many of these historic platforms don't provide the data in, in a very readable form. Uh, you may recognize the, the TNS emails that announce uh, alerts and things like that. So that's very difficult to, to keep track. Uh, our idea is to, to listen to all these streams, combine them, and, and put them together in an in a easy-to-use interface uh, uh, that combines all that information in one place. Once we have that information in one place, of course, we also know that there's a, a huge variety of, of platforms that have been developed who give very detailed information about each and every, every event. So we don't want to reinvent the wheel and, and, and re reproduce light curves that are available elsewhere and, and other tools. So we have uh, detailed links to all these existing platforms where you can dive directly into the platform without having to copy the name or remember the coordinates or do uh, coordinate transformation from, from, from degrees to, to uh, hours, minutes, and seconds, and things like that, which you, which you probably all deal with. And of course, uh, while we are building a, a new platform, we can do it in, in a more modernized way. Um, so we have uh, graphical user interfaces that run on the web. Uh, at astro-colibri.com, and we have exactly the same information, the same functionality on, on smartphone apps, uh, on both uh, Android and iOS, and that's the, probably the only talk in this week where I encourage you to open your smartphones and uh, head into the, the, the app stores and search for that. Um, and then just play with it. I, I won't be able to, to give you an overview of all the features uh, here in this talk. You just have to... Uh, uh, play with it yourself. One feature I, I mentioned, especially for the for the smartphones, is uh, they enable real-time notifications. So we have a menu, and then you can select all kinds of different uh, notification streams about the science cases you are interested in. Um, that's a, a bit of an old screenshot. That there are more more variety now, so you can can uh, select the, the the streams that you are you are you want to get, and then you get in real time once the information is showing up on TNS or or on GCN or, or one of these brokers, uh, uh, a notification on your phone, then you can uh, dive into the app and then uh, into these, these expert platforms. So I'll show a few uh, recent features that we added. Uh, I just show it on the, on the web interface because it's easier to, to see on the screen, but as, again, you get the exact same things uh, on, the, on the smartphone app. Um, so one of the, the things is the configuration um, of, of your uh, experience in some sense. So if we have user accounts, you can, can subscribe, so then you synchronize your, your settings between your, your, your web interface and the and your smartphone app. Uh, you can select uh, the, 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 uh, your favorite follow-up observatories, so or we, we have a list of predefined observatories. You can also add your own. You can also use the GPS location. If you have a small telescope in your backyard, you can use that. 
uh, you can use the, 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 the sky map configuration, various coordinate transformations, things like that. And then there's an information button which gives you, brings you to our main website for documentation, uh, which also runs an, an API uh, that you can access and get exactly the same information that we use uh, to run these, uh, these front ends. Another thing, uh, we try to simplify the, the first, first view of, of, of the web interface and there, uh, if you want to have more, more information, you have this, this uh, science mode button where you can switch on uh, all, all the details uh, of, of your events. You also calculate uh, uh, visibility or observability assessment for your selected observatory. So each event you can immediately see if it's visible from your favorite follow-up instrument. Or, or, or if you can forget about it. Um, again, uh, at the bottom there, you have this long list uh, of these external links, which are really very helpful because they allow you to, to dive into these, these external platforms. Uh, we heard about the, the Gaia alerts page with the light curves and things like that um, yesterday, and, and there are various others. Uh, I guess most of them you are, you are very well aware. Um, of course, um, the amount of data that's coming in is, is ever increasing. So an important aspect of a, of a visual tool like that is, is filtering. So we don't want to get, get swamped by, by all kinds of noise. Um, we we uh, divide these filters into two classes. So one is the observatory, so the detecting observatory, um, and the other are, are event type classes. There's also the, uh, all the, all of these are buttons, so you can select them or deselect them. Um, as you want, um, and if you if you long click on on any of these buttons, you you open up a sub menu filters, or, or you press long on, on your phone. Where you can then deselect if you only are interested by Gaia alerts, and you deselect everything and only keep Gaia, and you only end up uh, with the with the Gaia alerts, for example, or or CTF or whatever. Um, this also works on on these event types, so you can scroll down that long list of. Uh, classifications that is available on the TNS um, when you are only interested in, in TDEs, then, then you only keep these um, active there. Of course, you have to be a bit careful. So we also have all, all of the TNS events in there, so, so also the, the, the unclassified ones. And if you remove the, the filter on, on the magnitude, then of course, uh, your sky map will be not very useful anymore. But you can do that if you want. Um, if you have a tool meant for, for, for humans and, and interaction with uh, a few things that, that help this, this uh, information exchange, you can uh, share links to, to selected events. So you can send them to a colleague on, on your favorite Slack channel and discuss these events. You can also uh, go through these filters and, and select a subset of, of interesting events in a certain time range and download all the uh, 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 detail of the events in a JSON format. And very recently, we, we added a discussion forum where we think that people will, will start to, to highlight certain events that they are interested in and start discussing um, who is following up, if it's worthwhile to, to follow up that. Of course, you can interact, as I mentioned, with the platform via an API. Um, the main website there is just replace the, the .com by, by .science. You get the documentation and notebooks and, and all these things. And we, uh, if you want to interact now with these, these uh, GPTs, we also have a, an AstroCodib GPT since last week, which works surprisingly well. So you can ask questions like, what is the most interesting supernova detected over the last month? And it will give you an answer. Um, not 100% sure if it, if it's reliable, but it's querying our API retrieving the, the, the real detected event and then sorts them by, by, by some parameters, for example. Um, one thing I, I mentioned before concluding, so we also provide tools to, to optimize or facilitate follow-up observations. So I mentioned this uh, visibility plot, but of course for gravitational wave, a, a single point in space is not sufficient. So again, uh, we run uh, another platform called Talpi uh, in an API that you can then, then request an observation plan uh, to follow up gravitational wave events so that optimizes your, your tiling pattern in the sky by 
cross-correlating with galaxies and all these things and to get the results directly in the in the front end. That brings me to the conclusion. So I've shown you the, the new platform. Uh, I hope you have uh, fun with that. All the uh, major events are in there. If something is missing, just reach out to us. You have all these links where you find additional information. Um, we are also running a series of workshops. Uh, the next one is in the Paris, France area in, in September. Um, so please, please feel free to, to join that one. Thanks Thank you very much. It was a very, very nice talk. <laughs>